Howdy, welcome to Fish Tales. I made a froggy fly not too long ago that dove. And although that's a good trait to have, after I used it a while, the foam, the top layer of foam, it was basically three layers of foam. That top layer of foam came loose and it made the fly act a little different. So I got to thinking as to whether or not I could use that to my advantage and I think I can so I'm starting with a plain old mustad number two hook this is uh, I don't know what these hooks are made out of but they're very light they make good uh, fly hooks because they are so light they don't add any unnecessary weight this is a number two and you can see that number there, 3407DT, 2 watt. They're not very expensive. They're not extremely high quality hooks, but they certainly do work for what I need to do. All right, and we just throw up the hook and then get started. I'm gonna do this, it's gonna be a layered foam fly. Uh, and it's gonna be about the simplest design that I can come up with. I'm gonna use shorter legs, I'm going to use tougher foam, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll basically go from there. Alright, first thing I want to do on this fly is put the back legs on it. I'm not going to put long ones in it, I'm going to put short ones. He's just going to have a hint of legs. I'm going to use four of these hackle feathers. Basically two on each side. And of course you want them to turn out best you can. I like to match up the ends so that they're even. to the first one. I might make this fly run hook up, but that's not my overall goal at this point. My goal this time is to get a little better uh, a little better control over the foam. Alright. Alright, see there. Now that is about it for the tying. Let me strap this down. And I, I'm actually going to run this forward and capture these feathers all the way up. That'll give the foam something to stick to. Something more than just the thread and the hook. Good bit of mass on there. little spread eagle profile on that fly with plenty of mass here to put my foam on. Now I'm gonna cut my foam. Run that back up to the center. Actually, I think I can even tie this off. Just put a couple of half hitches on there. This is gonna have so much super glue on it. Don't worry about your thread coming loose. All right, there you go, that's phase one. That's about it for the tying part of this. The rest of it's gonna be foam. All right, I'm gonna use some yellow foam. And I'm gonna cut a nice long I think it's raining. Okay. It did rain a little bit. That was rather odd. Alright, we're going to cut this all the way up like this. We're going to 
fold it in half. And trim it like this. Just like that. Then we're gonna run that hook through that part right there and use it to separate the two legs. All right, I just took that foam and I'm using it to split the legs. And I'm just gonna sandwich this thing together, glue the top to the bottom like this. But what I'm gonna do after that is I'll cut the top out of the way and then use a bottom flap I keep the bottom long and come back over the whole thing. So it's three layers thick at the head. Alright. Got me some super glue. We got a good division there. I'm pretending to put super glue on here because it's not coming out. Where are you, super glue? The problem with super glue. It dries in the darn tube. No problem, just take the lid off it. Oh yeah, now it's coming out. Okay. Now you gotta be careful how you put your super glue down because you don't want it to spill out. Sandwich this together. Hold. And remove your fingers from where it sticks to the glue. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this back square right behind the eye of the hook. See that, how it's just behind the eye of the hook. And I'm going to put a little slit in the foam underneath it to allow for the eye of the hook and then we're going to pull that through and go over top like this that lets that hook stick out just a little bit and we'll glue that on there too we're going to come back we're going to glue the heck out of this thing i do not want this fly to fall apart this is a little better quality foam than what I typically use. It's got a little more durability. It's tougher. But let's glue this. Nice big bunch of glue. Hold that on there. And try not to get it on your fingers. It will stick your fingers, so Boys and girls, if you haven't used super glue before, be very careful. Because once it sticks your fingers together, they are stuck. See that? It will stick your fingers together. Oh, it's coming out of this now. I got plenty of glue in that time. <laughs> could put this in a use a clothes pin to hold that I got two of them here somewhere there it is. Put one on one side and one on the other that way you don't have to worry about getting your fingers stuck I want to trim that foam some more but that gives you three layers of foam. One on the bottom, two on top. Alright, that's long enough for that. I'm going to cut this top off in a V pattern. That's just roughed out now. Well, that is hot. That light is hot. Now I'm going to take it out of the vise. Any place where I need to put some glue, I'll put some glue to sandwich that together a little bit better. Then I'll start trimming on it. That side had come loose. 
So now I've got all of that glued together real nice. Both sides are nice and tight, so I'm going to take my scissors and start trimming. You can shape this. You can even come back with a fingernail file and smooth it out real good if you want to make a fly that looks better you can certainly do that I've done this often enough to know that even the best of the foam flies do not last very long if they work because the bass just tear them up foam through the hook like that in the back that'll keep these legs spread apart better than anything else that I've used I've put bucktail on there that just adds complexity this makes it simple that fly will look like that from underneath It'll look like that on top oh, got a little gap in my foam crazy glue brush applicators this stuff works good got a little brush in there but I've left the lid off too many times and it's all done so we're just gonna go like that and throw that in the trash but that's the good stuff that crazy glue and that little paintbrush thing that works good lasts the longest and I'm gonna use my sharpie markers to give this frog some color. I like using the markers to make the eyeballs because they do not fall off. You could put regular eyes on there but those eyes work just as well. It just, it's just an illusion anyway. 
I kind of like the way that as these things age, you know, you use them, they fade. So all this color I'm putting on this frog, it just looks more real as it gets worn. See that with just a little bit of color, you can really turn these things into something. Put a little dot right in there. Eyeball. A, pup a pupil. And to tell you the truth, that's enough. That is a good fly, just like it is. I'm going to go ahead and color the legs a little bit, and and but it's it's for all intents and purposes that is a finished fly. You could fish it just like that, and it should work just fine. It shouldn't dive. It should skip along the top it might dive a little but it should hit it should land in the water and the hook should go down like that so that when you pull it it goes like that but it could dive it doesn't have quite the arch of the the last froggy fly I did but this one will have better leg action let me color up these legs a little bit make it look pretty okay now I got the legs colored up so they're nice and green could spread on that one. Comes through the water, sits on the water, looks like this to the fish. Looks like this from the top. That is a very simple froggy fly. A very simple froggy fly. That's about as easy as it gets to make a fly that actually works. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good. Bye.